What's up guys? All right, I'm stoked. I just saw the shipper pull up. What's happening, Panda Nation? Peter Von Panda here. Hey, hopefully my car should be here soon. So uh, it's kind of a funny year. Um, you know, I've been watching a bunch of cars. There's a bunch on my wish list, my favorites of all time. And you know, some of them have really gotten to a point where they've depreciated so much that I can't resist taking a very close look at it. So anyway, I've been following uh, a few cars and there was uh, one in particular called Grand Sport that I really wanted. And I really wanted in black, gray, or silver. Silver was my third choice, but that's what I ended up making a deal on. So I ended up connecting with the guy out in California to get this deal done. Now, talk to him and buying a car sight unseen is a little bit of a scary proposition, but walked through it with him. Uh, he told me all about his service history, has uh, records for everything. And so, you know, I kind of took the plunge. And like I said, it's really mostly driven on price. Now. That being said, if you're going to buy a car from anywhere other than some place that you are locally, you should definitely try to protect yourself. Now, what I have behind me is escrow.com. It's not just for cars, but it's for a lot of things, you know, including internet transactions in the digital age. I think this is actually a brilliant service. So what I am going to do here is I'll probably do a full review on it when everything is completed. What's really interesting is he actually has a lien on it because the car was financed. And so escrow.com will do a payout to a primary lien holder as well for a fee. So that's pretty cool. So I'm really excited about it. What I set up is an account. He has to do uh, his side of the transaction too, including putting his name in and information in there. Um, I have to wire money into the account and then uh, get shipper and I'll have to get that shipper, put the tracking information there. And then once it says that the car has been delivered, I'll actually have two days to inspect and approve it. And then the funds will be dispersed. Now, because there's a lien holder, what it says it will do is it'll actually disperse the funds to the primary lien holder, uh, either receive the title directly and send that to me or have the title sent to him and then disperse the remainder of the funds directly to him. So it seems pretty good and it's much cheaper than flying out somewhere or hiring a local attorney and having that whole deal brokered. Now, a couple things that I have to do here is get this money wired. So I'm going to head over to the branch locally here and get some money into it and then start working on the shipping. And then hopefully, hopefully I get uh, the car that I am expecting to get. Oof. A little freaky, but I'm stoked. What's up, guys? All right, I'm stoked. I just saw the shipper pull up. There it is. 1999 Honda Accord, baby. Yeah. It's cool. It's actually a dedicated car truck, which, or car carrier. Sometimes when you hire auto shippers, they just uh, throw them up on anything. So, uh, even inside of like a box truck. So, pretty cool. I'm stoked. She is guys. Second level. Must have run because it got up there somehow. So, Open transport, it was the cheapest way to get it here. About a thousand bucks to get it from the LA area here to Chicago, uh, which seemed to be kind of about the right price point. Every lowest I could find was like nine something. And uh, this company was based around here. So excited about getting it down. And they were pretty quick, picked it up on Monday. It is Thursday. So that was uh, picked up faster than I expected. And then obviously once it's on the road, you know, sometimes they have a bunch of stops to pick up or drop off stuff. So. Really excited that it's here. All right, can't wait. Let's get this thing down. They've unrolled the back here. So it looks like even though there's not a really good approach and departure angle on this, should be able to get the car off. All right, guys, so Peter Von Panda out with Maserati Von Panda. Here's the big reason I got this car, because of the noise it makes. came off the truck pretty dirty so I just took the hose and a, a little bit of soap and uh, just kind of gave it a little bit of a wipe down. The car is older so you got to remember this is almost near vintage but uh, I just love the shape of this. I've always really liked the Maseratis when they first came out. Um, I just liked the look of them um, but then when they came out with the Grand Sport and I discovered that one I was really really excited because I was like man that's the one I got to have because there were a lot of small improvements as well as a lot of big improvements. Um, starting on the outside here it's actually quite a bit different than the other Maserati, the Cambio Corsos, the Coupe, the Spiders, 
because of a lot of the just the arrow stuff so this has a little bit of a lip uh, spoiler on the back here the rear diffuser is quite a bit different you can see here that it has a, a mesh grill on the back here and you can see even down here we have some little vents normally i'm not big on these types of things but what it did is it really helped kind of flatten out the bottom portion so if you look at the original coupe and spiders they were very round they actually kind of remind me of the jaguar xk8 but with the bottom enhancements here and really particularly if you look down here this uh rocker panel the side skirt here is so wide i mean this is like four inches wide it really sticks out it almost looks like a wing or a canard and it's kind of a little bit almost goofy but it really does work especially in person and that kind of stuff where it kind of flares out the bottom and then up here on the front in particular where you can see again this was all new the bigger grill here gave it a much bigger look a big bigger mouth and then it brought out this chin and widened it out and then you have some other similar like intakes that are similar to the back here that all gave the car a much broader wider look and so as opposed to being more xk8 like the original coupe and spider this has a little bit flatter like a spiker look so i just really love this design it just had a like i said a a, a more road hugging kind of squatter look the, then it did there were some mechanical changes here and so actually what ended up happening is that this rides all 10 millimeters lower almost half an inch lower and while that's not a huge thing one of the things that it does is it really does create some visual impact if you look at some of the original coops and spiders they almost look like there's too much gap on those wheel wells and so this really helped kind of fit the wheels into those wheel arches a little bit better and, and doing suspension changes on cars is no small or cheap feat and so to have that already done so that you don't have to kind of stance the car later is a huge huge improvement then when we talk about mechanically the engine was slightly revised again the uh, 4.3 liter ferrari based v8 people say it's the same as the ferrari f430 it's similar and, and and based on the same engine but it's detuned for you know more luxury driving at you know just a smidge under 400 horsepower i think 396 in this version as opposed to the 480 that are in the f40 and so um, not exactly the same engine and you can definitely can tell that when you look at the top you know there's a kind of a large intake manifold whereas whereas in the ferrari you have kind of two intakes and so so it does look a little bit different. I'm certain you couldn't just swap them in and out. But the other thing about uh, this car that mechanically got changed was apparently the F1 Cambio Corsa hydraulically actuated single clutch manual transmission, which is kind of seems a little bit like an automatic transmission, had quicker shifts. And so that was kind of an improvement because the, there are some aftermarket kits for the original Spiders and Coupes where you can actually, sorry for all the wind down here, man, where you can actually increase, you know, retune the the shifts so that they are a little quicker and people say that helps but in this car in the grand sport uh they already had done that so uh, i drove it around a lot you know and i was really really worried about the transmission and that's where i want to say the reason that this car is in my driveway is because the depreciation in these has been absolutely horrific uh cars like this cars that i think are really beautiful looking maybe even slightly timeless i think this car actually looks better in person Person than it does does in pictures it kind of looked a little upright in pictures but as it's sitting here it's a, it is a pretty low car uh, it's not super wide so it's it's kind of got a, a pretty narrow body so that's why it has a kind of upright look but especially with kind of the the horizontal accents on the side and those big flares it does have a little more squat look and it's just pretty comfortable it's not like getting into the, my prowler which actually I think sits a little lower so it's, it's a pretty comfortable car very much like an xk8 that I used to have in a lot of ways now the transmission here here is the problem and that is what has killed this car really really i i I'm, have no doubt about that people talk about this in the cambio courses uh in the maserati quad reports how bad the transmissions are because the f1 was kind of a little bit like blu-ray when people were moving from dvds to online streaming blu-ray got kind of, kind of caught in the middle it was a, probably a good product for the time but now you get high definition streaming uh with a lot more convenience and so it was kind of doomed because it just was kind of in a moment when we were shifting from buying physical media to 
you know, getting it online. And this is kind of a step that cars had to take that F1 single clutch transmission was probably an improvement over shifting it in some ways. But now we know that people like shifting it and that's wasn't really an issue of trying to get rid of the clutch pedal so much as this was probably the stepping stone to the dual clutch transmission. And so it has its place in history, but it was short lived. And because of that, because it wasn't probably as fun as shifting a manual transmission and it wasn't as good as the dual clutches that came shortly after that, you know, it just is a very unloved transmission. Now I will say, and we'll talk a little bit more about this, but I actually really like it. Yes, I would prefer a manual transmission, but because of how horrific these transmissions were in the stories and the reviews and people online and all of that, I really thought, okay, I'm going to get a car that's not going to be fun to drive. It's going to be kind of like getting a pistol that's uh, not a lot of fun to shoot. Um, you really want it because it has maybe historic value or is really nice, but it's just not going to be something that you're going to want to drive on a regular basis. It's not going to be a pleasure. It's going to be kind of a garage queen. And I will tell you what, this car is fun to drive. That transmission is pretty awesome. I can't uh, believe it, to be really honest, because I was so overly, maybe overly worried about it. And so I, what I want to show you here is actually when we go go to the car as soon as you open this driver's side door you're going to hear the 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 pump the hydraulic pump that powers the clutch that moves the clutch in lieu of your left foot uh, go on and that always kind of disturbs people i knew that was going to happen but it is pretty loud so i just want to be really quiet here and let you hear it so you can absolutely hear that sucker powering up and i think one of the things about this is that that pump goes out a lot and actually that pump has been replaced on this car already because it's gone even though this car is 38,000 ish miles on it that pump has been replaced once and, and actually both fuel pumps in here as well as the clutch and uh, that's part of the problem of the hydraulically operated computer controlled um, clutches is that they wear out and especially as people don't have as much feel driving them you know the clutch kind of gets engaged very slowly and that's why i always keep this car here in sport mode and that's why the previous owner did too to to keep those clutch engagements as short as possible to keep the wear as as uh, low as possible too and so um, hopefully you know i think it's probably going to be a better experience but uh, hopefully it will make the the clutch that's in here now last uh, a pretty long time in fact even though this car has you know 30 almost 39 thousand miles on it this clutch has already been replaced now i've heard of people saying hey i've got eighty thousand miles on my original clutch and it's 60 percent there i find those things almost hard to believe because of you know how many people have said they've replaced clutches at 20 25 000 miles so uh keep that in mind if you're buying one of these i would definitely try to get one with a new clutch if you do but as you can see here inside is also very nice and in fact what i remember in i think early 2000s when the cambio corsa came out they just talked about that this was the nicest interior that they had ever seen in a car and i do like the organic shapes you know in terms of low volume italian you know almost any european kind of niche car manufacturers they really just kind of did these flat surfaces it look kind of look like an old ac cobra you know it's a flat panel wrapped in leather right even the spikers were kind of flat aluminum panels um and so they you know because it's hard to do nice curves and kind of organic shapes double compound curves and things like that but this maserati did them you know probably the weakest part of this is the door which kind of looks a little kind of a little bit of an afterthought this car has alcantara in it i think everything in here is stock i tried to buy a bone stock car you can see alcantara uh, door pocket here with perforated alcantara i have never seen this perforated alcantara on any of the other maseratis i have seen alcantara but as, as i understood it the grand sports came with either leather or technical cloth and actually i didn't really uh, mind the technical cloth as much as some people but um you know because of the low production numbers on these i think at like 2400 grand sports to the us or something like that or maybe even full production they just aren't that readily available now i haven't cleaned up this car and this car has been sitting in a warehouse for a little while from the guy who sold it to me but i i have a feeling he'd never like customize this so i think this is an original thing and it's really nicely done and you can see here it's on the boot it's on the seats as well uh it's nice uh you know i like alcantara for the the touch and the look you know in terms of how it's aging i'll show you right up here it kind of starts looking a little frayed like kind of an old fleece jacket a little bit still nice and soft to the touch but one of the reasons that i made a deal on this car uh, obviously the overall deal was uh decent and so that's what really did it for me but i liked the color combo i did not love the color combo the 
black interior here was pretty nice. I didn't mind that. I really wanted a black car with a Cuyo interior, but finding a black car, one, is a little rare. Finding it with the Cuyo interior is, is pretty rare. The cars just aren't uh, prolific on car listings. And so you're left a little bit with what is available. And so that is the unfortunate thing about it, but it also means that it seems like the market is pretty thin on them too. So as a buyer, I was a little bit in the driver's seat. So I, you know, there were guys asking up to $40,000 for these cars, depending on the mileage. And that was just out of my budget. I didn't want to spend that. I, I wanted to get a good deal. Like I said, I'm sorry about all the, 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 the dirtiness of it. I have not had a chance to clean it up. I just got delivered and I'm stoked. Now, the other thing I want to show you here, I'm just going to ramble on about whatever I want because I'm stoked to show you this carbon fiber steering wheel with this little metal ribbon right on the top so you know where top dead center is they've talked about how this is weird shaped it's kind of an f1 shape you know they talk about how they did this to make the gauges more visible i don't know that they did or if this is just kind of like an f1 steering wheel type of shape here because it's not flat bottomed or anything i do like this it's pretty good i will say that on this one what also sold me is that the steering wheel leather is not pulling away um the the fabric on here and the leather on here tends to pull away a lot in a lot of models and so this was in pretty good shape this column cover here tends to shake a little bit it's kind of a cheap plastic i'm not sure where it's rattling it's not super bad but i'm sure i could gasket it a little bit so i'm gonna have to do that now if i show you the gauges here what i want to show you is they're blue this is actually very similar to what i saw in the maserati by turbo so the cars of the early 90s they use these blue sport gauges the the original gauges were like a dual uh, ring gauge with kind of I think a black outer ring and then a white inner ring on the other Cambio Corsa Coupe and Spiders. I actually like those better. They seemed more jewel-like to me, more watch-like. But these are uh, you know sportier. I'm sure they're a little more heritage. You know, but I do like them. They they definitely seem a little more premium than a lot of cars, particularly this vintage. Not so much now, but uh, they still look pretty good. So that's kind of nice. I also wanted to show you that the 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 uh, shifting paddles up and down here are metal, but on the back side we have. Um, I'm not sure everyone calls it like a felt but it's it, it almost seems like pencil eraser I mean it is like a fabric it's not a rubber but it's it's actually pretty hard that might just be a little bit of age but you can see here it feels good and so that's the nice thing I think when you get in the car if it's been sitting in the sun here these these paddles aren't super hot to the touch where you're touching them there so they feel pretty good but I was worried that this might kind of disintegrate and pull off and that you might have to glue some more fabric on there not going to be a problem because it's much more rigid than I expected now I do want to talk about the interior a little bit more because this is also what sold me I loved all the Grand Sport features like the better the faster shifting transmission the slightly retuned uh, engine the lowered suspension the out side fascias and things like that but it was really from here to here that sold me on this car because what we have are the carbon fiber accents around here this whole center console is different so they had a, a display up here on the standard model and uh, you know a, a keypad right here uh, the environmental controls down here the shifter knob which is up here on uh, the the spider um, and then this whole thing is a, a leather wrap center console and it was fine um, I actually liked it you know the, the whole leather wrapping thing looked pretty good but what they did here was they kind of went more of that sports car look and I just loved it this in here right in through here looks so much more ferrari-ish to me than luxury car and it's really cool i know i've got to clean things up here but we have a start button so you you take your key you power the car on and then you hold down the start button um hazard lights sport mode which always stays on which is really nice that's a question that's come up is whether you put the sport mode on and then when you turn off the car it stays it uh it always defaults back to regular it as far as i can tell this this sport mode always stays on here is the maserati stability control button here i would always keep that on for my sake and then the window buttons now i also want to show you here the environmental controls it looks like there's an auto right here um i have generally put it on auto because that seems to work but the i will say the ac is weird it kind of blows heavy and then Light and blows heavy and light it's a little weird it's a little annoying to be really honest i'm not sure how to dial this in if anyone has information on that i would love to hear it. the original infotainment system again pretty dirty but i actually like the look I'm, I'm trying to figure out how to get bluetooth in here so that i can play some music but i really wanted this car bone stock so many of these already have different uh aftermarket stereos in there and the problem with that is once the wiring harness is screwed up it's kind of hard to to put anything back to stock so i really wanted that there um 
I actually don't know what this is. I'm assuming that is an environmental sensor, you know, reading the internal temperature. The gate, uh, the vents here are pretty standard. They kind of look like Mitsubishi clips to me. You know, they rotate, they do pop out. But one of the things that I want to show you here uh, that's really impressive about this car is it doesn't have sticky vents. The plastic that they use in here, for whatever reason, has some sort of coating down here on the buttons and on these knobs. And then particularly in these switches, you'll start seeing them ripple as like the coating on it tends to underheat get really sticky and tacky i've seen it on other electronics and plastics before too but this car has been really unique in that these have not been fixed and yet they don't have that problem so um, i'm not sure if they will have that problem in some ways i'd almost rather that someone went through having them all restored because it's kind of expensive but although you can use some things like uh green cleaner and clean them up and get that that finish off of them but it's also very common in the ferraris the 355s 360 430s the, the plastic in there is kind of the same thing i do love this little metal panel here the surround that's put in here with all the buttons that just makes this car look like a formula car and then down here again this is what like i said sold me this whole center console here is carbon fiber and it just looks awesome the the black of the carbon fiber here is set off more even by lighter color uh, interiors like the white or the cuyo it just really looks pretty striking and it's pretty awesome this is the 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 selector knob it's in drive automatically. Well, it's when you start it up, it's in neutral, but then it's in drive. If you want to put it in reverse, you pull this up and pull it back. And then what we have is you can go into automatic mode here. Uh, I'm not even sure what that is right there. Uh, froster, fog lights, and then I think a dead button. It'd be really cool if this were had been a uh, universal garage door opener. That would have been nice. And then the mirror controls over there, which I have tried. 12 volt contorting right here so that you can charge up things and then a little panel right here with a, another alcantara pad and then what you might be able to see depending on how far i can turn around uh two air vents to the back and, and as you might be able to see i've got the front seat here on the passenger side pushed all the way back but there's still leg room and then for me what up? uh you can see i've got the seat where i would use it and there's still plenty of leg room in the back that really speaks to how far this roof line kind of goes back it doesn't drop off like a fastback although it does kind of look like it that kind of ruins the line a little bit on the outside the car looks a little heavy on the cab space on that on that part of the box but uh, it is what it is, and so <laughs> it works, but it means that I could really fit a couple people in here. We're going to have to fix some stuff. Um, I do have a little wrinkle in the vinyl that's wrapped on the A-pillar there. You can see that. It's not on this side. I'm sure that's maybe heat shrinkage. What's also interesting is this top vent here, and I didn't know this, and I'm assuming that these are original have just little phillips screws there they're kind of annoying because when you look up there you see them and it just kind of looks like it's bolted together um so i'm not a big fan of that i might try to get a little plastic cap the little plastic caps bmw use those in the z3s and cover those up just to make it look a little more finished uh but that's that's kind of nice i also want to go in here on the clock analog clocks are all the rage uh maserati has used the same design now in all their previous models but it does add a little bit of class i really do like that so pretty pretty clever but man i'm just stoked not perfect condition yeah no it's not perfect condition uh but after i get this cleaned up detailed up and uh, i want to go through all the fluids and everything uh and drive the heck out of it but i will say that it drives pretty nice here's the overhead console no one ever shows this i don't know why i'm not sure i don't know there's a couple holes here i don't know if those are environmental sensors i don't think there are any microphones on anything we've got a couple buttons for lights uh up here passenger light that light doesn't seem to do anything. Maybe the center dome doesn't do anything. We also have like this jersey mesh material, no mirrors behind it. All this stuff needs to get a little cleaned up. Oh, there's a mirror for the passenger back here. Um, looks like it almost should flip out or something. I'm not sure how this works. I don't want to break it, but I don't really need that. But yeah, once this gets cleaned up, I think it's gonna be pretty awesome. The other thing that I really like are these stamped, embossed almost head uh, rest logos. They just look pretty cool and if, this had been leather in the back there would have been one right in the center there there too but uh pretty cool i'm surprised that these persist i mean i'm, not, I'm surprised that the leather doesn't shrink around it and kind of wash it out a little bit i'm not sure if they actually put a piece of leather or something in there and then 
glue it down, but uh, pretty clever uh, little design. So the other thing I wanna show you here is that the uh, surround on the door handles is a pretty loose. Now I used to have a Jaguar S-Type and it had the same problem. So I'm not sure if I'm missing a screw here. I might try to see if I can find that and then maybe screw that in. But you can see here where it once kind of held nice and snug up against there, but it's loose there and it's also loose on the passenger side. So it just might also be shrinkage. I've noticed that, you know, the plastic, the leather, the vinyl, all that tends to warp over time. But man, I am stoked about this car. It sounds great. Uh, I will do a more in-depth review on it when we get some time. I will tell you that driving this car is much more pleasant thing than you expect. Uh, you, the shifts just aren't that hard, even in sport. I, I haven't moved it into auto and I haven't moved it off of sport, but um, you can actually just pull the, the paddle when you're driving and it'll pull shift. So it's not super quick and it's not instantaneous, but it's pretty it's pretty decently quick and you'll feel it shift. Now, if you if I pull this and let off the gas at right at the same time, you'll almost not feel those shifts. So it's just kind of like driving a manual where you want to feather the uh, the gas a little bit to rev match. The car is supposed to do it on its own, but uh, in this case, it it's doing it. Um, you know, you're kind of helping it along and it does get pretty comfortable. Now, before I sign out here, I do want to show you that they apparently have done some sort of tinting at the top portion here. It's a little lit, but lit like 80 sunglasses tint, right? It's kind of like goldish brown. It was kind of funny because when I was looking down on the floor here, I was like, oh, something's like sunburnt. But it's the it's this uh, eyebrow sunshade across the top here. And I, that must be factory because, you know, sometimes you can go to a tinter and have them put on a strip. So it's okay. Uh, it's just a little Little funny because of the way the gold tone here it doesn't really match the car i wish it were like a black but i'm, I'm assuming that they don't want to try to blacken this up too much just kind of protect your eye from catching the direct rays so pretty awesome really like it haven't even listened to the radio haven't even turned it on because all i wanted to do was hear the sounds of the engine but man stoked i got a mozzie finally i know it's old but so am i I will check it out. Lots more to come on it. We're going to be doing and fixing a lot of stuff on it here to get it ready for a summer. But stay tuned. Uh, if you want to pick up some Maserati gear, I'll put a link to it in the description. Peter Von Panda, out.